I record on my iPad. I don't need an engineer. You can watch my other videos. I literally went to a studio. The engineer showed up, but I couldn't, like, for that studio, like, I didn't know how to book it without the engineer, so I had to book it with the engineer. And he showed up and was like, well, I'm going to record on my iPad, so you can just hang out. And I don't think he liked that, <laughs> to be honest, but uh, he was like, well, what are you, like, you don't want to use our stuff? Like, you don't want to use our stuff? And I was like, no, nah, I'm good. Like, I have my own mic. I got my own shit, like, my own iPad. I could go to any studio in the world and just I have my own shit, right? So that way I have a consistent, more consistent sound and I have it on my iPad. Um, what happens is what I've learned with engineers, here's a ramp guys, learn from my wisdom, my experience. I learned that you could record on your iPad, right? Now, you can watch my video on how to do it, but basically, you can just use this with the iPad. And the beauty of that is that the iPad is silent. There's no computer fan noise, right? So you can record directly, it's silent, and because you're exporting the beat and the cover and the reference, there's no latency. There's like, it just, it runs smooth. When I record on the computer, there's like latency and I even have like the most advanced shit and you're still going to get like this latency because when I'm recording on the computer, like I have my file and I got all the plugins and shit. So no matter what, I'm going to get all this latency, but on the iPad, no plugins, no nothing. It's all raw. So it's just, it just works. Like it just works easy. Um, and the other thing is that, uh, I can record myself. So I don't need an engineer. I have all my files all the time my own mic set up i'm gonna get consistent sound sometimes the 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 studios have a mic to use that is like a neumann mic 102 103 that's like de facto right the standard if you go to like a hip-hop studio and then uh but sometimes the mic is is broken. The one time I went into the studio, was like the mic was fucked up, and I was like, "What?" And this happened to me before. I was at Cal Arts, and they had a Neumann 102 that was fucked up. Like it was like a light bulb. I was like, <sighs> "Like what the hell?" I think someone dropped it. Right. The other thing that can happen is the cords are messed up, or or the the microphone cable, or for whatever reason, or maybe like you just maybe you're just unlucky that day and just shit doesn't work. Right. So that's why it's really important, in my opinion, when like in my process is to be very self-reliant. I just show up whenever I want to show up. I record myself. I get out as soon as possible. Right. Um, so you can watch my other videos of how I do that. So that's why this is this video is super important. This is the process. I mean, I could show you the nuts and bolts more in detail. If you guys want, let me know. But this is like macro level stuff right this is you know when you kind of want to take it to the next level right um and actually get songs out there and get them quickly done so you can go you can go the i put four songs on my ipad i get out like four like two three hours later like bam 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 you know what i mean so anyways let me go back to the ableton here now i'm gonna show you the vocal chain all right, so this is basically what I've learned, okay? Uh, this is what I do. This is the vocal chain. Um, I got a waves tune chingadera. This is if I do singing. Um, I'm not the best singer in the world, right? So I'll auto-tune it with this plug-in, um, and it sounds pretty natural, and it sounds pretty good. So depending on the song, like I'll tweak it and then you just put the key in and then it works pretty well. This is the second plugin I use. This is an API 550B. This sounds amazing. And I have the beauty with this is I have my own custom preset that I've, I have it dialed down. So depending on the microphone and the room of the studio, I have the preset. So there was one studio, like it was this, right? 
because this went goes to zero because the room was, was kind of dark at a dark uh sound to it so this one the two i added this boost to 40 because it was a little bit brighter like a like a bright tighter sound um in the in the studio but the other the other things are the same so this has a, a cutoff uh and this has a little boost on top and it has a little bit of boost right here saturation so you could see all my settings you know next and this this one i've noticed the api this is my favorite preamp now um the apis sound bright and in modern recording you they, it does sound pretty uh brighter is is kind of the um what I've noticed is the trend in modern recording. So it has a bright sound where pe people are used to it, like a, a bright pop sound. So this will help you get there. And this, uh, if you have a Neumann mic, you would probably put this to zero because <laughs> they're, they're bright microphones, but I'm using a Soyuz mic, uh, two, um, which is a Russian mic and uh i guess uh just to show you it's the silver bomber this is what i'm using right now it's the best sounding microphone i've ever heard in the world so you're welcome there you go and I've tried a lot of mics. I've tried the U87. I used to have one and I sold it because I was broke back back in the day. And I'm talking on a um, Austrian Audio and I like that mic, but the Soyuz is, is the one, dude, is the one. It's, it's, it's less bright than the Neumann, but it sounds like a million bucks. It's amazing. Next one, um, this, is a roll off i do an extra roll off just because and notice i i put um let me hold on let me just make sure that yeah okay this should be working um what was i talking about oh yeah so you can go this is just the regular one from ableton eqe8 and i save the presets roll off write it roll off so why to call it write it well because when I was doing my covers, I, I was like, okay, what this like, right. It was like when everything was like this album, this, uh, uh, 1993, that's when I started really getting the sounds, but I was still like, and I did my own master. I did my own mastering starting diamond hands. Right. Before that, I got a master other places, but this album, like I was getting the sounds down. I started using the, like getting the the plugins and the sounds that I liked and then write it, I believe was just like things were starting to solidify. And then by nobody now I'm like, I have a, a specific sound template that I'm sharing with you guys that I use. So because I had it dialed in, I was like, well, I'll just use it all the time now. So this is, I'll, I'll just put it all the time. Cause it was like the perfect roll off for, for me. Next one. Um, these ones that are grayed out, I experimented, but I didn't like them, but that's why you see them right there. Okay. So, uh, the other newer songs that I have, everything's a lot more tighter, but these are like, just, just bear with me here. Um, hold on. yeah. I'm gonna, so the glue compressor, uh, this is from Ableton, um, glue compressor, uh, where is that shit right here? So I just drag it on there. The threshold I adjust, makeup I adjust, depending on the song. And the only, and I don't use compressors by the way. Um, if, if there's something that's in the, in the file, I can just go in there, edit, um, like this, splice it, select it. And then you could change the volume, you know? So that's how I adjust my tracks. Cause I, I'm like pretty good at 
like recording so i i don't i'm not yelling or any of that shit so like my vocals are very smooth so there's very little adjustment that i do just specific things and then i use two pop filters which you can watch my other videos of how i do it so my editing is very very lim minimal it's everything i do is to be faster and to have better quality faster you know so anyways um so i don't use compressors but i, I use compressors for s some of the singing songs because i noticed that when i was mastering hold on let me go back here i noticed when i was mastering that because of the way i'm mastering i'm going through a, a, a audio signal chain that is going through a um, stem stem uh what is this shit called oh my god summing mixer jesus christ okay summing mixer so the summing mixer and then it's going through a, a special preamp that's giving it some sound and then it goes to a tube compressor at the end just to give it the sound but i don't really compress it uh and i noticed that the peaks of the singing they were getting like like clipping a lot or not a lot but they were causing issues right back when i at the when i printed so so i to get it like really really dialed in that's why i started using um the glue compressor let me go back here uh the glue glue compressor and it kind of iron things out so i don't use this is not necessary but for singing just to tighten things up the way i master it's useful then i will show you the vocals or the reverbs that I use for this particular one. I did this, um, guitar rig vintage, uh, like a plate and then a little bit of this quad delay. And then I saved it. So this, this reverb, because I liked it, it's like a really like has a lot of space, a lot of delay. There's a lot of openness to it. If you're rapping, I will show you which one to use for your rapping and other singing. But the cool thing is I could save it. And now if I like this reverb, because I've already put the song out, I know what the sounds that I have. So I can always go back to that reverb. It's like, oh, I'm going to use the nobody reverb. Okay, boom, I could use that. The other reverbs that I use, I will show you. There's two other reverb. Uh, one other reverb that I use for vocals. Um, where is it? Uh, RC48, this one. And they have... Um, uh, let's see, it's, it's this one, watch. Pop vocal, I believe. There's a male vocal. I believe it's this one. Medium male vocal. And then you just put mix and then that's the one, right? And then if I'm right, let's see, I, I saved it as a user, write it. Yeah, that's the one. So then I, that's the one I use for write it. And then for all around the world, I just added a little bit more wetness to it. So yeah, just a little bit more wetness just to put it, the vocals a little bit further behind. And this is, this reverb is based on a lexicon. So it sounds good. It sounds, it's digital reverb, but I mean, it's like, Everybody uses this one. There's so many songs that use the lexicon style reverbs. This would be the guitar rig would be more of like a like a special ops. This would be like go to. And if you're rapping, um, then the male male vocal and it just sounds sounds like 
it's just not over overly reverb, not under reverb. It's like perfectly perfect. I don't know what else to, to to describe it. So that's what I would do for the vocals. And then for special effects, I'll do like a ping pong just from Ableton. Um and then yeah, just a regular one. And then you could automate this dry wet signal. So for certain things, I'll emphasize emphasize certain words. As you can see. Um yeah. So I'll give you now a demo of what this sounds like when you put these um these um plugins in. I wanna tease you I wanna please you I wanna show you baby Wait, what's that the, I need you compressors on. I want your body to the very last drop okay so i'm gonna add the vocal I want you to the weights when you want me to stop and who can love you like me nobody and who can sex you like me nobody and who can treat so you, you like me lip. now nobody. baby nobody baby nobody and who can do it like me nobody and who can give you what you need nobody and who can do you all night long nobody nobody baby nobody I want the night Guitar rig. for me and you. So come here, baby, and let me do it to you. Don't be afraid, cause yeah, I won't pong. bite. I promise to give it to you just the way you like. And who can love you like me? Nobody. And who can sex you like me? Nobody. And who can lay your body Nobody. down? Just Nobody, the, baby. Nobody. Right. And who can treat you like me? Nobody. And who can give you what you need? Nobody. And who can do you want still sounds body? good. Nobody, baby. Nobody. And the band keeps playing on. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh no 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 nobody baby. So you, as you can tell tell by the demo, all of these different reverbs sound good, but I chose this guitar rig one with the ping pong because I gave you it was I like gave you like a spaceship reverb, like really tricked out, you know. But it's basically just uh, most of the time I'm gonna use the RC RC forty eight, and I, that's the one uh reverbs that i like um and then everything is is um tailored to my this is my signature sound guys so um you could do whatever the hell you want <laughs> hold on you guys you can do whatever the hell you want <laughs> but i'm showing you my signature sounds and how i do it so if you do it the way i do it you're going to get the most organic best sound you can possibly get doing it yourself, basically. Um, there's other producers that got their own signature sound, blah, 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 blah. But like I said, I, my method is based on the Bruce Sweden method, which is the engineer Michael Jackson. So, uh, yeah, so it's, it's very similar. What I do that's different is that, um, I'm working with digital. That's, that's the difference. So I'm just kind of using the benefits of having digital plugins and, um, that's pretty much it. But as you can see, I have the outboard gear to make it not sound digital, right? I have the best mics I could use to make it not sound digital and less plugins to make it not sound digital, but, um, and no compression, right? I don't use compression just for the singing on certain songs. So it doesn't over peak my printing and cause crazy clipping like it's like it's like uh the peaks are um 
tamed. You know what I'm saying? But I don't, I don't over, over compress the shit out of it. It's just like certain peaks. It's, you know, very light, a little bit, you know, gain, but it's just like very, very, very light tamed compression just to, just to make sure there's no crazy ass peaks, like as, as like a safety, you know, not for the actual sound of it, which is different from a lot of other producers. The modern method is squash the shit out of everything, make everything sound like shit. That's the modern method. I'm taking it back to the old school hybrid with the digital benefits. That's the Gustavo Adolfo Uribe method. All right. Now let's move on to the drums. Who oh, 